All right, hey guys, this is Vapid2323 from Vapid Flats, um, Flatland server, classic server. Um, I wanted to make a really quick video to help people that are trying to do port forwarding for a classic server. This can be applied to a um, single uh, player, or I'm sorry, a survival multiplayer server as well. The process is pretty much identical. Now, I'm going to be taking us through a Linksys uh, router port forwarding setup. So, what you really want to do um, is find out what kind of router you have in your house. And the easiest way to do that um, is to simply go find it. Most likely, it's going to be nearby your modem. And it's going to be, um, if it's Linksys, it's going to either be black and shiny um, with a bunch of wires coming out of the back of it. Um, or if it is a um, older Linksys router, it'll have like a purple front um, or kind of a blue body and purple front kind of looking thing. And you'll see big antennas on it. So they don't look like that anymore, but if you have anything like a year ago or six months ago, that, that might be what they look like. So either way, once, once you find that, um, you can kind of get the model off of it. If it's Linksys, this video is exactly what you need. If it's not Linksys, you might need to go to their website. Um, if it's Belkin, if it's um, Netgear, any of the other manufacturers, you might have to go to their website and find more information about exactly how you log into it. Um, because that's what we're going to do. We're going to log into that machine because inside that little box there's a, a, a web interface, uh, kind of like a website, uh, if you will. And um, that website's going to be where we configure that box to allow Minecraft to get and receive connections from all over the world. So really what port forwarding is doing for you is it's saying that, hey, when somebody outside of my connection wants to get in touch with me, um, well, how do they do that? The router doesn't know where that connection needs to go. So we need to port, um, forward that port to your machine or your server. We need to tell that router where to direct that data. That's all port forwarding is all about. So real quick, let's just get through this. I'm going to try to, I'm obviously trying to explain this in a little bit more detail than a lot of the videos do. Um, I know a lot of videos out there explain, you know, okay, this is step one, two, three, four, five. You know, they tell you exactly how to get the steps, but they don't really tell you what you're doing. I don't find that useful. If you really want to learn how to do this so you don't have to keep going to forums and keep asking questions, I think it's better that you understand exactly what's going on. So, anyways, for me, when I when I went to, you know, look up Linksys's website, I went to the Linksys.com and I found out that, hey, the address that I need to type into my web browser up here in the um, URL field um, is 192.168.1.1. This address is a um, private address. It's it's your home network address, okay? So this address actually might be the exact same one that you need to type in on your computer, and I'd suggest you give that a shot. Um, if uh, 192.168.1.1 does not work, another really good one to try would be uh, 1.100. That might work for you. Um, or you can try on some occasions I've seen 0 0.1. Um, that can also work. But you'll know you're on the right track when you press enter and you get uh, authorization required uh, screen that's asking for a username and password. So for Linksys routers, this is really easy. Um, it's admin, A-D-M-I-N, and again, A-D-M-I-N for the password. So those are the same. Um, for Link or, uh, Netgear and Belkin, um, you're going to want to go on to uh, Google and simply say, search for what is the uh, login username and password for my Belkin model number router and more than likely on the first page you're going to find results for what you're looking for. So um, we're going to go ahead and log in here and here's my router, here's my login page and um, so this can kind of look a little confusing. Um, now if your screen looks like this, congratulations, it's going to be really easy for you because all you have to do is follow along with me. But what we need to do is find the port forwarding section of this router. So this screen that I'm looking at here right now is actually on that little box we found earlier. That uh, one with the antennas on it, the blue um, and purple box or the black box for Linksys. Um, that is what we're looking at right now. We're logging into that box. So now we're in here. We need to tell that box how do we get this port 
forward it so that we know that this incoming data that's trying to, you know, this guy that's trying to contact my, um, my server, we need to direct his traffic to this machine. So what we want to do, and um, this is for Linksys, we're going to go into applications and gaming. Um, and this gives us, uh, this actually gets us into our port forwarding little toolbox, but um, your router might be slightly different. Um, maybe check under like something like administration, setup, um, anything like that, and just keep an eye out for port forwarding or anything that really has to do with ports. Um, that will generally be the right area. And um, if you find an area that's asking for a start, an end, a protocol, it's asking for these TCP and UDP, um, anything like that, you're probably on the right page. Um, and it's going to be very, very, very similar to this. So now here's a whole bunch of numbers and it kind of looks like a jumbled mess. It, that doesn't make sense to a lot of people. But some of these numbers you might um, see be a little bit familiar, like this one, uh, 25565. That's the default port or default setting for a classic server, or actually um, a uh, alpha server too, um, classic and alpha. They both kind of like to share that port. Um, in my setup here, I actually have a classic server which uses a different port. I changed that in the configuration settings, and as you can see, I had to add that to my port forwarding as well. So people that want to play my classic server get directed to my computer, and people who want to play alpha get directed to my computer as well. Um, so now, how do we tell them what computer? Um, you know, you may only have one computer at your house, um, but me, I have a, a bunch of different machines. I have an iPad, I have cell phones, Blackberries. We've got laptops, you know, all sorts of different things. So in order to make sure this traffic actually gets to your computer that has the server on it, we need to get your IP address or your, um, your think of it as your computer mailbox, okay? I don't, I don't, I'm trying to use pretty layman terms here. Um, it's just your address for your computer. Just like your house has an address on it, the post office needs to use that address to send and receive mail packages to you. Well, your computer has one too. It's called an IP address. So. What we want to do is go down to, um, and I'm running uh, Windows uh, 7, so again, if you're on a Mac, um, if you're on Linux, or, well, if you're on Linux, I hope you know how to do this, um, but if you're on a Mac, you know, this process is going to be a little bit different. You're most likely going to have to go up to the Apple uh, icon and go to your network settings in there. Um, I'm not 100% on Apple, sorry, I don't use them very often, but anyways, for a uh, PC, um, go ahead and click on your Start button right here. And if you're using a Windows XP computer, uh, an older one where the, you actually see the word start down here in the bottom left, um, this is actually really easy. All you want to do, um, in this general area of your start menu, you're going to see a button that says run. Um, what you want to do is just click on that run button and you're going to get a little window that says run. Anyways, um, for everyone else that's using Windows uh, Vista or Windows um, 7, uh, like I am, this little search window down here um, is also the run. It's the same thing. So what we're going to do, what our Windows XP users, in that little run window, I want you to go ahead and type CMD. And for all our um, uh, Windows Vista and Windows 7 users, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing, but we're going to do it right here in this little um, search uh, box here. So I'm going to go ahead and press the enter key on my keyboard, and we should be getting a little black window on our, our screen. Now this is called the command prompt. Um, anybody that supports networks or works with computers is probably pretty familiar with this uh, window. What we're going to do is find out what our internal IP address is. Um, and that's actually what we're going to be putting in this last field right here. And as you can see, I can pretty, you can pretty much guess that my IP address is 192.168.1.102. Um, so what we need to do is find yours. Don't use this setting unless you actually see it when you're doing this little black window. Don't use my settings because those, those won't work for your machine. So over here in this black window, what we want to do is type in a command. Now, this command, you're not going to be able to use the mouse or anything. It's just a, a text interface. So um, we're going to type in I-P-C-O-N-F-I-G. Oops, F-I-G. All right, and this is called the ipconfig command. Um, there's many different variations on it, different ways you can get different information, but this is, should do a, a pretty good job of giving us what we want. Now, I have a bunch of different um, information that's popping up on mine. Uh, yours might have this kind of information. Yours might be a little bit simpler. 
Um, what we are looking for is the IPv4 address. For our Vista users, you're going to see an IPv6 may be listed here. IPv6 is the new IP addresses that are coming out here in the future. We're actually running out of those computer addresses that we're talking about. So they're coming up with a new technology that's going to give us a ton more. Um, so we want the IPv4 address for our XP users. You're probably like, why don't I see IPv4? Well, XP, you just want to look for your IP address. You probably won't see the V4 um, after the IP. Um, and if you just kind of follow these little dots over to the right, you can see 192.168.1.102. Now that's my address. Make sure you use the one that's showing up on your machine. So now that we know this, that's great. That's exactly what I want. I, I need to actually fill out this, this um, port forwarding diagram here. Um, so we're going to name it something. This really doesn't matter. I could put you know anything I want, one, two, three, four, five. It's a, it doesn't matter. And we're going to put the port. Now, if you're using the default setting, and I'm assuming that if you're watching this video and you're trying to learn how to do port forwarding, I'm going to assume you're using the default setting. Um, if you changed it and you need help looking that back up, go back to your server properties um, text file or whatnot, you know, see what you changed it to and make sure you use that number. But for most people, for everybody, um, and if you're not sure what it is, just use this number. You're probably going to get it um, right. So 25565. Um, that's my starting range. Okay. And this is the range that we're talking about here, start to end. Um, that means that if I wanted to open up port forwarding for a larger range, if I needed a program that used multiple ports, I can go ahead and go ahead and open up a thousand ports or whatever for that program. Okay, so what we're learning here today can be used not just for Minecraft. This can be used for um, if you're having trouble with an uh, instant messaging program or something like that, and you go online and you go to a message board and they go, oh, well, you need a port forward or you need to add that port to your port forwarding uh, list, you, this is the same process. We're going to do the exact same thing. So, anyways, um, going back in here, uh, 25565, and then I'm just going to go ahead and to put 25565. In this case, we, we don't need to open up more than one. Um, and from my little black window that I had, I probably closed it already, um, but from my little black window that I had up there, the command prompt, I found out that the last three digits of my IP address were 102. I'm going to go ahead and don't forget to do this. Go ahead and make sure you enable it and then hit the save settings button. Your router may reboot. It may say settings successful. Um, and at that point, you're ready to go. You want to go ahead and check your server and make sure that it actually uh, lets you connect to it. Now this video is already gone uh, 13 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop there. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and uh, I'll try to answer them, but keep in mind, um, I do training uh, in tech support and that sort of thing all the time. I really, really, really want to tell you, a lot of the time, if you just go to the little tool, um, I'll go ahead and type it up here, it's called Google. Um, if you just type in your question, whatever you're thinking about asking, type it in here first. You know, if you have a question about how to find my IP address, how to find my IP, you know, you can go ahead and find out all that information pretty easy just by typing it into Google. I'm an advocate of just using Google. Um, if you want to be good with technology, seriously, the number one thing I'm going to tell you, get good with searching on Google. Find out how to find what you want on Google and uh, pretty soon you're going to be the one providing information to all your friends. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this is helpful. Um, I know it's kind of long. I wanted to be a little bit more in-depth than the general um, short little five-minute videos you might normally see. So thanks for watching.